Hello, hello. I continue to what I started with what I started uh, talking about yesterday. Language is something that we are using every day all the time and we don't uh, really think much about it when we communicate with the people that we feel comfortable uh, talking with. We are used to just expressing ourselves and we don't even uh, see or hear ourselves, you know, as if from the outside. However, if you want to be effective uh, communicating with other people you, that you have not uh, talked with or expand your audience, then uh, you might not even realize that people might not understand what you're saying or what you're saying is not landing, we uh, landing well with your audience culturally but also from the point of view how you sound when you uh, simply pronounce words and uh, therefore like although we all uh, here in where i uh, live we speak english in our daily lives to be honest when i first came here and uh, started living here uh, i had uh, difficulties to understand local people, how they speak, because there are subcultures. And uh, when I was in Latvia, I was used to uh, hearing people, uh, Europeans mainly, or I was watching, like, I had been also watching American movies. I could uh, understand most of that language, but here where I live, there are subcultures uh, that speak differently. And I had a hard time to understand what people were saying. For instance, um, I remember that um, I wanted to join a garden club and I posted uh, pictures of my garden um, at that time when I started my garden. I wanted to join a garden club and people were so kind and um, they, uh, they invited me uh, to their meetings. And I remember that uh, once we uh, were supposed to gather in uh, one of the members, uh, garden club members house, and I didn't know where that house was. And uh, there was a lady who invited to take me to, uh, to that place. So I agreed, of course, uh, I was so thankful and I got in the car and there was that lady another, and another lady and they were both sitting in, uh, um, in, in front. Um, the lady who invited, she was driving and her friend was sitting next to her and I was sitting um, in the back seat. And they were talking uh, and they were talking fast and then sometimes they were asking me questions and I had the hardest time to keep up with what they were saying because I could not understand their pronunciation and that's that's one that's the southern uh, English that they used but there are other subcultures and people you might not uh, you might not even uh, realize that uh, sometimes people don't understand what you're saying and it's okay to, to maintain your culture, your subculture, because in Latvia we also have dialects and people are proud of their dialects. Like, for instance, my sister moved to another part of the country and, um, and now she is speaking the way people speak in that part of the country. Uh, however, uh, it's also um, useful to consider to learn um, how to speak the standard language so that broader audiences would understand you. And for that, some, uh, you, you, if, if to help you with that, um, language can be broken down. You can, you can listen to yourself um, speaking. For instance, you can uh, have your uh, speech recorded and you can analyze which sounds you pronounce differently, which vowels you pronounce differently than uh, the standard language, for instance, and which consonants or uh, what uh, letter combinations or sound combinations you pronounce differently. And uh, probably you will never completely get rid of, especially if you are uh, like older generation, like I am, like for instance, middle age or so, you would probably not uh, totally get rid of your dialect or accent, but you can get closer to the standard language by just understanding what those differences are that that um, distinguish you from how what the standard uh, language is and this is not to criticize once again it's not to criticize the, the way you are speaking but just to give uh, just to say that hey maybe it's worth uh looking into it and and 
and trying to see how I speak. Because maybe somebody who is trying to be friends with me or who is trying to understand my message uh, simply doesn't understand me. That's one. It's about the pronunciation, but uh, it's also about our voice, our stance, our pace and cadence and how appropriate it is for the occasion or situation where we are speaking. For instance, now I speak just like I normally speak in a conversational language. However, when I present my speeches, I do it differently. I try to not use uh, I, uh, to use ahs and ums, that's what we do in uh, Toastmasters Club. We practice uh, getting rid of those filler, filler words. And uh, I might speak, uh, sp uh, speak uh, louder, I might have pauses, all of those things that really, really help to make an impact that you are trying to make. Also, for instance, meditations. When I do meditations, of course, I would slow my pace down and I would speak in a different voice. Also, when uh, how it depends on how um, we stand or uh, I, uh, even if we stand or sit down while we are speaking, it all uh, affects how we come across as speakers. So this was what I meant when uh, I was talking about the language and learning the language. So it's not only for um, people who are learning uh, a foreign language, although these things are related. If you uh, master listening, and listening is key here, if you master listening and noticing those differences, how people speak differently from one another, that might also help you to learn a foreign language or to be a better presenter in your own language and to reach broader audiences and to more, make more impact. That's what I meant when I said that I have new offers uh, for the language.